Hey everybody, we were talking last time about the different interactions with the different plate boundaries, convergence, divergence, and transform. And we can see some of that in this picture. You can see oceans colliding with continents. You can see oceans being pulled apart with divergence. You can see ocean and ocean colliding, creating convergence. Transform would be when they slip past each other. And we've talked about those boundaries, but how do we even know that they move? Well, the way to know that the plates move at these boundaries especially is to look for the energy that they create when they do so. So the energy they might create would be volcanic activity, obviously. We Absolutely. See mountains and volcanoes, but what other types of energy? Well, they also transform into vibrations, like in the case of earthquakes. Earthquakes should give us an indication of where these boundaries actually are. This is from the U.S. Geologic Survey. These are the earthquakes that happened in the last month at a certain level, but you can see that right here in the state of Idaho, we have a 4.6 earthquake that happened 15 kilometers below the surface. So it means that Idaho is on a plate boundary? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that. As a matter of fact, that's kind of shallow. It's not terribly deep. I would say that what we would want to do is look for places that have more earthquakes, which would indicate more motion. So down here in Mexico, it looks like we have a large one. If I click on it, we get about an 8.1 that have an 87 kilometers deep in the air, so that's a lot deeper, and the severity was a lot higher. And you can see right around there, we get a lot more activity. And the depth would also indicate that possibly there's a plate collision there. So when we look at the entire planet, and we look over the last month with the largest earthquakes, you can see they're all over the place. They seem to be all over the place, but if you look really closely, they seem to be clustering together in certain areas. So up around Alaska and Japan, we've got a bunch of earthquakes. We've got a ton down here with Indonesia and Australia. Uh, we've got a lot down around the Yucatan Peninsula and South America. And we've got these random ones right kind of in the middle of the ocean. So in the middle of the ocean might indicate that there might be a boundary there, one that we've been studying a lot of, which would be the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So this could be a divergent boundary based on plates being pushed apart causing some vibrations when that energy is released. So now I've put on earthquakes that are very minor, very small shakes that we can't even feel, and we get a lot more on our map. And it really makes a definitive line around the Pacific Ocean, which would indicate the Pacific Plate. So the Pacific Plate outlines the entire Pacific Ocean from, from Asia all the way through the Americas. But we do kind of have these ones right in the middle of the Pacific Plate. We do, and that is a hot spot, actually, where you would find the Hawaiian Islands. It's not necessarily the case that a volcanic activity and earthquake activity only takes place at plate boundaries. There are places where it is common otherwise. So I've linked a video that you should watch about the theory of what they think is causing the creation of the Hawaiian Islands. Earthquakes and volcanic activity kind of can go hand in hand, like you said, and we don't have to necessarily have them at the boundaries. They're more likely at the boundaries. I can see the mid-ocean ridge right down the middle between Africa and the Americas, but definitely you can see the Pacific Plate where we're getting a lot of activity out here. And if you look over at Africa, you get a divergent area there as well. So if we overlay this map with the one we just looked at, we can see that definitely we have boundaries from each of the different pieces of crust that we have, continental ocean crust that could be on the same plate, like South America has a half continent, half ocean crust, and where those boundaries are between each of those pieces of crust is where we're seeing a lot of that activity. Yeah, and then they've given names to all the plates. Some we talked about in the last image, Pacific Plate specifically, and you can see that the South American and African plates are split up by that mid-ocean ridge. So at each of these plate boundaries, we're going to have convergence, divergence, or transform boundaries. Mm -hmm. Okay, so earthquakes give away that there are plates, and we can see the outlines of the plates, and we know there's boundaries, but how do we even know they're moving? Well, there are a couple different ways that they can tell that they're moving. One way is through magnetic changes in the rock. So one of the surveying ships back in the 60s and even back in World War II they used instruments to figure out that there was magnetic anomalies. What that means is when the magma rises, there's iron in the rock, and that iron will line up with the North and South Pole. Correct, and if 
the iron is aligning with the north pole, it gives a magnetic positive to the north, and then if the iron's lining up with the south pole, you get positive to the south end, and you end up with bands of alternating magnetism in the rocks. So because Earth has a magnetic field, and the magnetic field is not constant, it changes over the hundreds of thousands of years, uh, we get these bands of rocks on the ocean floor. So looking at ocean rocks, we can kind of figure out that everything is moving, because if you look at and date continental rocks, they're between three and four and a half billion years old. When you look at the ocean floor, the ocean floor is a lot younger. Yeah, about 180 million years old. Where would the youngest be? They would be near the rift zone or the, the uh, divergent boundary where the magma is creating new rocks. So we have new rocks being created today, and the oldest ones are at the furthest reaches of that plate, diving back down into the earth and recycling itself back into magma. Mm -hmm. So an image here shows us that red indicates very, very young rock, and blue indicates the oldest rock. So right down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, you can see the newest rocks forming. There's a nice rift here in the Pacific Plate, and we saw that there was actually two pieces to that Pacific Plate. There was the what we call the Nazca Plate and the Pacific Plate, which leads to a lot of convergence along the South American border, which is why you get the Andes Mountains. Actually, the entire Pacific Plate, there's convergence all around, so it's slowly being consumed, and because of the movement and the divergence at the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean will eventually... Covered that there are plate boundaries. We know that earthquakes kind of give away where those plate boundaries are, and we can look at the age of the rocks to tell us that the plates are constantly in motion. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. We'll see you next time.